Welcome to Florida Frontiers, presented by the Florida Historical Society. I'm Ben Brokemarkle. Established in 1565, St. Augustine is the oldest continuously occupied city in the United States. From the European settlement of the New World to America's manned exploration of space, Florida defines the boundaries of the modern era. There's still a great deal of controversy and a great deal of debate as to where Ponce de Leon first comes uh, and uh, makes landfall and comes ashore in Florida. Ponce de Leon returned to Florida in 1521, hoping to establish a colony, but his efforts were rejected by one of the many sophisticated tribes of Native Americans who had been living here for thousands of years. Nobody should leave St. Augustine without visiting Castillo de San Marcos, the, the Spanish fortress. It's the oldest Spanish fortress in the United States. It was uh, begun in 1672, you know, almost 350 years ago. Historians, humanities scholars, and sociologists say that the moment Neil Armstrong set foot on the moon, the modern era ended and the postmodern age began. I do think it is important that we continue to explore. That's what we were meant to do as human beings. And uh, we ought not to let anything get in our way of pushing the boundaries to continue to explore in every way that we can. We're here at a lusty battlefield historic state park to discuss the Civil War in Florida. The loud booming of cannon fire rips through the North Florida pine forest 15 miles east of Lake City as startled cavalry horses whinny. Repeated rifle fire rings through the trees as more than 10,000 soldiers confront each other on February 20th, 1864 near Ocean Pond. While there was some gunfire exchanged in other parts of the state, the Battle of Alusti was the largest conflict of the American Civil War fought on Florida soil. Alusti is important for uh, a number of political reasons. Um, it is significant because it comes at a time when the United States is attempting to swing southern states back into the Union. I'm representing James Henry Gooding. He was one of the people who fought here. My uh, great-great-grandfather died on the battlefield here, and it was, I came out here for many years. I've been out here about 18 years now, and for the first 10 years or so, I didn't know that. There was an explosive contact, explosive mine submerged under the water. He struck that directly under the hull, approximately at the foremast, and it imploded a huge hole into the bow of the boat. The front deck of the Maple Leaf caved in, and the pilot house fell forward. The ship's whistle started to blow as its wire was stretched. The pilot turned the boat in an attempt to get to the east bank of the river, but it was too late. After five or six revolutions of the paddle wheel, the Maple Leaf sank to the bottom of the St. Johns River. The archive at the Library of Florida History in Coco includes thousands of rare and out of print books, maps dating back to the 1500s, more than 12,000 postcards, historic photographs, and original documents. You can find information about governors, generals, and influential community leaders, but also told are the stories of fishermen and farmers and everyday people who make history happen. It's uh, uh, being there and uh, telling history from the bottom up is, of course, history. It's the little man that makes history and not the generals, and uh, so I like to hear from the little man. Barbara Vickers and her neighbors were thrust into the national spotlight in the summer of 1964, Peaceful protests such as lunch counter demonstrations and attempts to integrate local pools and beaches were met with increasing violence. I wanted to participate, but I was afraid. And um, I wanted a better life. And I said, the only way you, you get it done is to get out there and do it. The St. Augustine Foot Soldiers Monument has its back turned to the slave market where people were bought and sold as property and faces the building where lunch counter sit-ins took place at the Woolworths department store. The monument stands as an enduring testament to the power of everyday people to make history. Well, thanks to our roundtable panelists, you've been watching Florida Frontiers, presented by the Florida Historical Society. I'm Ben Brokemarkle.